the, the, the charity was, was his idea. He said, I know you like to read. You're a big fan. We talked about it, how it's important, and, and I love what he's doing. He said, I take your face, put it on this charity. <laughs> so uh, that's how I got involved. Thanks to P.J. Harsler and his books. Um, you wanted us to say a good deed before we asked you. Uh, yeah, but you're not supposed to spoil it by saying it out loud. Um, I've met a number of amazing Castle fans on Twitter, and one of them was a huge Eliza Dishku fan, and so I went and stood in line and got her autograph for her today. I know it's tough, but oh, it's a good deed. That's very nice, okay. <laughs> um, my question is, <laughs> I know it's hard, um, I'm a huge Castle fan, and one thing I've noticed, I'm sure everybody else has noticed, is the show just keeps getting better and better every year, every episode. This, this season is absolutely amazing, the acting is amazing, the writing is phenomenal, and yours and Stana's chemistry is just, it's perfection, really. Um, I'm just wondering, with as the show goes on, <laughs> um, how do you think, like, what do you think needs to be done for it to just keep getting better, and is that even possible? <laughs> So here's, here's the deal, um, I'm on this show Castle, and it, it probably kind of looks, if you kind of just kind of look at it and see how much, when, you, when you're looking at it, I, I'm all over it. I play Castle, my face is there, I'm always talking, I'm always flapping my yapper. It kind of probably looks like maybe I'm in charge, or maybe I'm the boss, <laughs> or maybe I know what's best for a network television show. <laughs> The reality. In the beginning of the show, they give me a book, and it says, this is what you're going to say. And then there's going to be a director there, and he says, this is where you're going to stand. And then I stand there, and I say your thing. And then I reap all the credit. To your question, what will it take to keep it getting better? Um, to leave it in the capable hands it's in. Well, one of those decisions that those capable hands made, obviously, was to, to get uh, Beckett and Castle together early on. There was a lot of uh, talk about the Moonlight Curse. You guys have uh, totally proven that that does not apply to Castle. Uh, why do you think it's, it's continuing to work so well with Beckett and Castle together? I'm curious for your perspective. I think one of the things that lights people on fire is seeing people fail and not being yourself. Uh, I can watch them fail, and I'm so safe here. I think that's why The Office did so well. Uh, when you see uh, two people that uh, you, you, clearly they're meant for each other, clearly they like each other, but they won't get together, and you know better than they do. There's a sense of, I think, superiority there. There's a, <laughs> they're so dumb, right? When will they learn? I think once we've started the relationship, those moments haven't gone away. It's. It's not heaven, it's not uh, happily ever after, it's a rocky road, just like real life. So we can still sit there and go, shouldn't have done that. Awesome. Uh, up to the top, hello. Hi, Nathan. Um, so Hi. I'm pretty sure everyone, I mean, not everyone, but there's a lot of fans of Dr. Horrible, so I was wondering if you could sing a part of Dr. Horrible. <laughs> Here's, here's the thing. Um, if you were walking down the street and a stranger came up to you and said, hey, sing a couple bars for me, you'd say no. If you were up in front of an auditorium full of people and a stranger said to you, just belt out a couple tunes, you'd say, dude, who are you? <laughs> Dance 
monkey tits. <laughs> it's not really what I'm about. That having been said, me. Let's dance it back up. Yeah, so that goes for singing and dancing. And kissing your sister. All right. Hello, sir. Hey. Cheers. Uh, knowing uh, after shooting Firefly and Serenity, knowing Malcolm Reynolds as well as you do now, can you look back on your scenes you did with that character and tell me which one was the most interesting to do? There was a moment. The episode was out of gas. The moment was at the end of the episode. Malcolm Reynolds had just blacked out. That's all we know. Then, slowly sound, light comes back. And there he is, awaking on a gurney in the... What do we, what do we call that place? The little... Lab. little medical lab there? Oh. Infirmary. Infirmary. <laughs> Hold up, you guys. He's there in the infirmary, and he's just trying to make some sense about what just happened. He's trying to... He's, he's just... What, you got a thing in your arm. You guys came back, and there's... And they explain it all to him. There's a moment that I really like where they say, just take it easy, everything's good. He goes, good. And he goes to lay back and he goes, wait. Are you all gonna be here when I get back? Good. Like for a moment he thought he was gonna he was dreaming. And it worried him. Love it. So anybody who has uh, seen an interview with you or read an interview with you knows that in addition to being obviously uh, such a key part of Firefly and Serenity, you're also a huge fan of the work right. that Josh created. So when did you become a, a fan? I mean, in addition to being that integral part of it, when did you really realize, oh my god, I'm, I'm a huge fan of this as well? I was super excited. The first, the first thing I ever read about Firefly was called The Treatment. It's, there's no dialogue. It's just a play-by-play. -play. This is how it's going to go. It's, it's a, it was, I don't know how many pages long, but it's just a story with no dialogue. But this is how it's going to go. Like someone just kind of summed it up for you. I was excited. When things started rolling, Joss invited me down to the, the set, to the costume department, to where they were building the stuff, and the blueprints were, and here's your gun, and, Here's his gun, and this is what this is going to look like, and here's the bad guys, and that's going to be a hat, and this is going to be a, this. I started getting so wound up. I took pictures of everything. When we did Serenity, someone, I was in a meeting, and someone said, we don't have the blueprints, we don't know about the size of the old ships or anything inside, but... Uh, I have photos of all the blueprints. <laughs> like a spy. Gentlemen on the floor, hello. Hi, Ethan. Uh, as uh, both an actor and a massive geek myself, I know there are characters I would give my left arm to be able to play. Uh, Sing a few bars for us. <laughs> No. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering if there's any character out there, uh, whether it's being played by someone right now or not, um, that, given the chance, you'd like to take over. Also, uh, Jillian Clare says hello. Lovely. <laughs> um, James Rockford. Oh. Anything on Star Wars? By the by, I say this kind of stuff all the time, and then I see an article about Nathan wants to do this, and he's got his eyes on. Please don't do that. If you're listening or watching this, don't do that. I'm just, this is just wishful thinking. Let me just have a dream. All right. <laughs> Spider Man villain, the Scorpion.
Is that, is that good enough? Anything else Star Wars I say that? A robot? Greatest American hero? And I wrote a buddy comedy for me and Alan Tudyk about fake sci-fi actors. That's it. <laughs> Hello. Hello, my name is Mike. Uh, Mike. Big fan there, Nathan. Mike, you have excellent taste. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my question concerns a PS3 game called Uncharted. <laughs> and you were mentioning how Indiana Jones really inspired you. There's talks about an Uncharted movie that you may play the main character. Now hang on, I'm gonna stop you. Let's, let's be specific. When you say there's talks, it sounds like something official is happening. But really I think what you mean is, I read on the internet one time. That's a valid defense. Not everything on the internet is right on the money. Well, completely, but uh, would that interest you at all, though? Being a would it interest me? Yes. Please, God, don't get into an article and say Nathan Fillion, Nathan Drake, and all this fundraising and the thing and pushing quite. Don't do that. Here's the fact. Uh, what I know of Nathan Drake is that uh, Mark Wahlberg is most likely going to play it. That guy's amazing, he's funny, he can do it, he's gonna do a great job, and overseas, that thing's gonna make a ton of money, and here in town, it's gonna make a ton of money. These people are in the business of making money. They're gonna take a great movie, they're gonna spend a ton of money on it, they're gonna get a huge star in there and go like this, and they're gonna say, who's Nathan Fillion? <laughs> I'm sorry, it's true. There's a certain stratosphere that some guys are in, and then, Nathan Fillion. <laughs> Ain't dead yet. I got pokers in the fire. Maybe one day we'll get there. I'm gonna maybe have my own big thing. It's gonna be cool. But um, yeah, I don't think the time is now for, for major motion pictures for Nathan Fillion just yet. But I, I appreciate the support. <laughs> Thank you. Is Nathan at the top of your stratosphere? very much for being here today and being in Alberta. Thank you. And uh, after uh, interacting with you at the photos yesterday, thank you so much for your personality. Uh, you're fantastic. <laughs> thank, and, uh, I think I'm going to thank Jeff on that one. Jeff, thanks for that. <laughs> thank you. Um, and that all ties together with thank you so much for being a uh, fantastic actor and have a personality that we get to all care about, that is worth caring about. So, Woo! thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs>